Good evening and good morning wherever we are, wherever you are in the art world. Mm. George, we are having you on our next issue of special issue, the DR uh, magazine, the Art Talk magazine. Again, we have been following you. We met through a dear friend and artist, Nikomaki, if we can say that. And since then, we are your greatest fan because it's incredible, again, what you achieved. All our artists are so inspiring. Tell me, tell me, so you are in your atelier in Greece now? Yes, I'm, first of all, thank you for inviting me and it's my pleasure always being with you. And I'm back in Greece and in <laughs> Europe uh, and I'm very happy being back here after a long trip and exhibitions in Japan. And I'm back for good, hopefully to stay like more like four years in a row to start working in Europe. And you know that it's very important for us being in Europe because painting, which is my main topic is like Europe for me. Yes. So yes. Thanks for giving No, we, we, we thank you for taking a bit of time. And, and, and again, it's a, it's a, as we can say, it's an honor to have you and to follow you wherever, you know, you really, wherever you are in the art world, because you've been everywhere since, since our last art talk. But tell us, tell the art talk audience, uh, who is George? Who is George Stamatakis? What inspired you to be an artist? How, how did it start? It was a long trip, meaning that I was always knew that I'm an artist, but I was like, good student also so i decided to start working with uh, the um, medium of let's say painting since i was like very kid but uh, then i studied firstly economics and then media and marketing and then i follow directly to the art the reason that George, let's say me, decided to do this because I wanted to have in a public language and um, having my personal perspective on everything that I'm thinking, I worry, I love, it makes me to feel scary. So I wanted to have my own medium to speak with the communities, with the people that I love. And art is a, is a very special thing for me and a very common um, language that we share, which is like painting for me, the image, the pintura, how it's called it in Italian. So for me, it's very important to communicate with the people for issues and for topics that I worry. And I decided to do this through art instead of journalism or marketing and things like this. So George is a very happy person <laughs> I, uh, because um, I discovered a very magic world that I belong and uh, I'm sharing my very personal worries about our existence through the art. And as a painter, as an artist, my main topics are surrounded around the world of the environment. Yes. Something that we all have to worry, but at the same time, we have to speak to, because dialogue is a very nice way, a very correct path to solve or to give solutions. Yes. That's why I'm here, and that's George doing, actually. Uh, I'm designing and I am creating a project that uh, facing problems directly to the communities through exhibitions, of course. Yes, and uh, I love the fact, you know, it's your magic world and your fears because we all have fears. So can, can you share with us what is your ma magic world and what are your fears? 
Well, I'm a very deeply in love with the nature. Probably uh, romanticism was a movement that I will definitely follow for my whole life because you know that um, nature comes first and we follow somewhere there. And I worry because um, many, many new realities comes and every year we have to deal with these changes that happens to the global system. Uh, but I'm not talking about the financial uh, things. I'm talking about the environmental um, ways. So um, I do really worry about what comes in the future for us. And my body, of the body of my work, always speaking about topics like this. I cannot hear you. We saw it for the first time in in Roma, in Nuvol, actually. The first, uh, we were all in COVID, you remember? Mm -hmm. And I met you through, also through Valentina Ciarallo, that showed us all your amazing installation that you had there. It was it was incredible. It was the first time actually we spoke to Nikomaki, but I saw your your works. It was really impressive, incredible. But in 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 this respect, George, uh, you're the color of phenomenon mm -hmm. series. You explore the world about above and under the water. Yeah, this is something that you know. This is beautiful and then creating installation that let the visitor feel as they as we are underwater yes so can you tell us about the technique you use to create these beautiful works of art that seem to float or rather move like the ocean itself yes uh, it's a work that i did uh, enjoyed it creative myself a lot and firstly, presenting uh, for the Olympic Games at the Hokusai Museum in Japan. And I was thinking what materials can match, uh, like uh, can fit to make like the fabrics to looks like water. So I decided to use a Japanese silk, which has mm. high transparency. And also it's very elegant as a material. So you can see through the fabric. And I did also photography and painting on this digital. And I print and I created the whole installation, which is talking about the um, damage that we uh, do to the sea and what is gonna be the future changing of the color of the sea. So I was very lucky being also in Italy, presenting this, that the Louvre with, <clears throat> of course, Valentina. And uh, in, in this case, I used Japanese indigo and this Japanese indigo can actually damage a fabric if you don't know how to use it. So uh, I did uh, this uh, by using the fabrics, the silk, which is 100% yeah. organic, because I love this organic uh, materials to use in my practice. And yes, I created the work here and then Japan. So I managed to make a work that actually combining the whole four important elements that we have, like fire, water, mm -hmm. earth, and air because the installation is moving, blah, blah. So uh, I, the idea was like to make something that it really relates a lot mm -hmm. to the nature uh, image of the sea, but also to be like very, uh, how I can say it, beautiful. Because, yeah. you know, uh, as an artist, we're talking about things, but Sometimes we are the people that we need to present beautiness. So I wanted to give to the audience and the visitors a very nice experience, a beautiful experience yeah. on a very sensitive topic. Yes. Um, and it was a bit bad, I think, but it was good. 
well it's unique what you do i think it's unique it's um it's 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 beautiful it, it, again it's uh, when I first saw it, I I was so impressed by you know as you said by the lightness you know there is this floating effect and you you actually feel to be in I I love you know since we are from the Mediterranean uh, you know the sea is part of us you know it's it's uh, it's all around us uh, the colors the 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 the, the, the you know the beauty. Uh, it is it is a, something very very important, but not only for us, of course, as you say, for the entire world. Yes, the, this archive because there is an also archive of photography. This archive is to go to the next generations and inheritance. It's not for us only. That we are doing actually, we are working for the next generations. Yes, yes, I love it. I love it because, as you say, it's it's one thing to to you know to talk about it but also to do something about it. It's very important. Yes. And it's very important to make people to feel more sensitive and the responsibility that you give to them through your work, it's important for me. Yes, yes. No, I, 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 I adore what you do. And as I said, we, 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 we are following you. So another, another thing that I would love to, to, to know before we go also to see, to visit your, your studio, your atelier, that it's, uh, we can see the background. Uh, in your atmosphere series, yeah. the term that comes to mind is contemporary naturalism or mm. neo-naturalism. Yeah. Both romantic and perhaps desolate in the representation. This yeah. landscape attract like magnets. Was what was your inspiration about the series? Mm, you know, it was a very big, very big um, story. But let's say that before many years we had this problem in Athens about the atmosphere because of the pollution. Right? Yes. We globally dealing with this. So one of us was in Beijing in China. I was like uh, visiting and I was very surprised and but it was very magnetic at mm. the same point very romantic very atmospheric but at the same time it was a very big problem so I was thinking oh my god imagine to have those people in a very big city and you cannot see anyone because they destroyed it and that inspiration comes out the idea of the atmosphere, which was like for me, uh, it, I wanted to introduce to the to the uh, audience a new experience about how we see, because mm -hmm. this blurry atmosphere is actually um, a way to express a feeling, and know to describe something. It's not minimalism. Mm -hmm. Uh, the idea uh, that it is to express the atmospheric, let's say, sense that you feel. And some people that they, their vision is not that very good, like mine probably, <laughs> they, feel, they feel very, very comfortable being in front of a painting of this series of work. So I wanted to give something which is like beautifully, but at the same time damaged because on this painting series, uh, the audience um, can have the chance to stand in front of a painting, but actually this uh, work can have the ability to change shade of white according to the lightness and the humidity in your space. So this work is a very alive because if you have a very bright light in your home, for example, mm -hmm. uh, it becomes very bright white. If your house is not very well on light guys, the shade of uh, white becomes a bit weak, a bit yellow. And this is a technique about the oil, the amount of oil that we use, the medium, I mean, and the paint itself. So uh, for me, it was an idea how to make a painting that can change color in a small time duration and make it 
actually alive and also can give you the ability to check if your house inside as co is correct. So if it's correct, the painting looks very healthy. If it's not correct, if you don't care about it, if you keep it closed, blah, blah, it starts to become yellow. And this is funny, but at the same time, it's um, something that I wanted to make. I wanted to make something alive. And that's why. Um, but do you do you know if uh, any, you know, of your of your art lovers or art collectors, do you know if this process has is, is, is happened already? Yeah, it works. <laughs> and it works and it works a lot because I sit in this studio when I have something to transfer it somewhere. They say, oh my God, this has become yellow. Yes, it's become yellow, but you have to keep it in a very healthy environment to start being again white. For painters, especially for great painters, because they know the analogy, they know the reaction between colors and medium, they know this. Uh, because linoleum gives that yellow sense. Yes. Um, so it was linoleum and uh, white color. And this series has actually two colors only. It was white and Van Dyke brown, titanium white. And also, uh, of course, linoleum, which is, was like, a, the analogy was like a very tricky game to give the results, but that was the technique that I used for this series of work. Of course, a big scale and small one. But... Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, but you don't have anything that we can see after? No, you have... Sure, sure, I have a few here yes yeah. okay yeah. So, so we will we will see very short one other question that i would like to ask before you know before asking all other your other project your ai or as my daughter says al zone <laughs> exhibition at the sumida okusai museum in tokyo is perhaps your most intriguing work yes japanese indigo online and as a medium you actually process the indigo plant to create your paints. Yes. Tell us about the process, George, and how you create this haunting landscape. It's incredible. I will explain you. Well, while I was producing the, the atmosphere, I was feel a bit shame because I was talking about the environment and at the same time I was using plastic things like plastic canvas, not, of course, the body of the canvas, but uh, gesso, for example, or the paint itself, or metallic. And I was thinking, you cannot talk about the environment and using plastics and whatever. You have to do something to actually can be elegant also, but at the same time, very organic. So I was like... I was very lucky because I met um, James, a very elegant and fantastic person, and Catherine, his wife, that they have an um, industry in England, UK. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we make a deal to produce a specific transparent fabric for me. Mm -hmm. And I moved in Japan and I did some, let's say, uh, practice on indigo and Japanese mm -hmm. indigo. So I realized that the things that we are shooting after the dying, we can actually use it. And I decided to produce my own palette of colors, which is nice to see it yes. now. So uh, I tried to make it happens without using any let's say artificial things mm -hmm. all was natural so i tried to melt the plants and created colors like this oh wow like brown yes like green like black you can see they're alive alive Huh? Alive, yes. Very incredible. And this has happened because you know what? It's fantastic to 
try to make a very beautiful green color and apply it in a canvas, but nothing can, you cannot compare it with a natural project, which is actually plant. So when a, you apply a plant, melted plant, of course, as a color in your canvas, it's naturally the color, you cannot, how again say it? Nobody can copy this sensitivity of a natural color. And for us, it's a bet as an artist to make something that reflect to the reality, but not reality. So mm -hmm. I will show you one work that, and I will explain you how I did it. Yes. So in this case, we have this canvas. It's a linen. Mm -hmm. And I am dyeing blue color of indigo. So you can see the shade of a C here, which is mm -hmm. indigo. And then I am creating the grassy green color and the brown and the black. Mm -hmm. So I'm building in totally different timers, of course, right? Because you need sometimes to become from brown to green for blue to green and green to brown. So I'm creating, uh, I'm waiting like three months about for, to produce one of those works, but uh, I managed to make something that people suit through away because after indigo expires, there is no use for it, it's garbage. So I'm adopting this, I'm taking garbage, I'm creating the palette of the colors and I'm applying it directly to the fabrics after, of course, having done the fabric. So in this work, yes, this here, is you see the a, a very, a very transparent fabric. So I die first and then I create the whole painting I'm designing with the colors that I create myself. Mm -hmm. Here, for example, in this work, there is no uh, uh, blue color. Yes. It, yes, it's only green and brown. This is a decision that I made in order to create this work. Here, for example, here is a small depot and I'm having here some works, but it will be nice to show you how it actually looks. You can see that the transparency follow the whole painting. So you can see through the fabric. Yes, indeed. Of course, of course, I'm building um, landscapes in this case also. And of course, I'm talking about the environment, right? Because I, uh, this is um, the topic of this series of work. And, so, and the, for this, for the Sumida Okusai Museum, how many did you, how many series did you do? Uh, <clears throat> for the Sumida Hokusai Museum, we work firstly in the Akiyosida International Residency. Mm -hmm. And we presented one big installation, uh, like a small house. And then there was few paintings on the wall. I will show you one of them that now travels to Monaco, <laughs> but it's still here. This is one of those paintings that we present there. Beautiful. And... Um, <clears throat> It was this uh, shape of circles, but in the middle of the space, it was a big installation, uh, like a small Japanese tea house. And uh, it created close out of six big framed uh, works. And yes, them like this. It was this kind of, sorry. Yes. This work. Uh, 
Uh, but they, they, you know, they, they, you, we could say like as if it's silk. Eh? It is or it not? Feel, it it looks feels like, like silk, but it's um, one hundred percent linen. <laughs> but you have this um, sense of silk. Yes. Um, so but this... I, I love Georgia. You can, you know, it's a, you can work in a very big <clears throat> installation and very. <clears throat> it's uh, it's beautiful that you can do both. Yes, I, thank you. Um, um, sometimes we need to um, go to the space directly and not stand on the wall. And yes, my work sometimes needs to expand to the space in order to be more, I don't want to say beautiful, but to be more uh, directly understanding from the audience. Because if you remember also the color phenomenon, and in this case, uh, the transparency was one of the, let's say, uh, techniques that I'm using on my medium. And this has happened because I'm pretty much sure there is another layer that we cannot see as humans. And I want to express this feeling because I truly believe that there is something that we cannot see. Beautiful, beautiful words. Uh, George, uh, tell me what is your very important question? If you can share what is your next project, which I know a little bit, <laughs> can you share it with the, our talk? Yes, mm, I have a few works to show you here. Yes. And um, the next work, it will be, there are two paths. Okay. One, it will be figurative paintings that mm -hmm. for the humans, it's going to be a combination between humans and nature and humans. And then other one is a very, um, sensitive work, very personal work that contains only black color. Probably that's um, very how sad, but it's not sad. Yes. It's something that I do really feel to work. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm running a very dark period for my life, in my life. Mm -hmm. I don't know why and what why is this even if i smile a lot <laughs> but um i'm i'm seeing everything very black and i realize that this feeling doesn't really have to do uh with many 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 things about but just a feeling that we have and i wanted to create a very black um series of work and i'm very inside of this i mean it's i don't know i will maybe if i show you a work to understand so yes. this work describes yes. a very realistic landscape which is black oh maybe like this but at the same time they have a motif of a polaroid image yes and this kind of work is poetic a bit. It's more poetic compared to my previous works. Mm -hmm. So I want to add some extra poetic gestures and way of painting because mm -hmm. here we have no colors. There's colors, but we are using only black. So I wanted to have some uh, sense of what is destroyed or not. Mm -hmm. The painting itself is not dramatic. The color is dramatic. Mm -hmm. So even if I said before that I'm in a very bad period, that doesn't mean that I'm not good. Yes. But we have... 
we have to understand that we can experience both feelings at the same time. Mm -hmm. So this work expressing, absolutely expressing 2023, which is good that we are alive, but it's also sad. So this work has no any specific topic about the environment. Mm -hmm. There is some, many, many people who relate this work with this work that I'm doing. I'm, I'm talking for big scales, right? Big scale. Yes. And this work has to do with the fires, okay? Mm. So when I finish this series of work, we uh, I'm going to talk about the fires and how the fires destroying environments, destroying because we experienced globally, right? Russia, Brazil, Greece, Italy, Turkey, everywhere we have this problem with the fires. So we're going to see this work, which is like what will be happen after a fire. You can see, right? And yes. it's, it's related with this work. Yes, because of course, you know, over the summer we are, we are, you know, we we have we experience a terrible, terrible scenes of uh, of uh, devastation. Yes, it's a it's a very unfortunately it's a horrible moment of our summers. The like week. this work, yes, yes, like this works, and also like the black one. Yes. So even if, when I started this work, it was the big fires in Greece. But I don't want to say that I produced the, these works because of the fires. No, I may. I, I had an exhibition in Turkey the previous year that it was a painting like brown with the dust and uh, wood. This is something that continues to come for my practice. And I'm pretty sure it will be connected with the um, fires and what happens after a fire. Mm -hmm. So if we say this is the fire, the previous work that I told you, the back one, the black one is the after. So... It's what I feel now, <laughs> as I said before, I feel bad, maybe. Oh. Uh, but um, for me, it's inspiration. I mean, but you, you, you're right, George. You know, it's. I think it's every moment in life. It's important to grow. It's important to, you know. I think it's, uh, it's this uh, moment that makes us understand how important are these few moments where we are happy, you know, make us appreciate life even yes, more. Sure. sure, but as I said before, for every single project that I am creating, there is a topic. Yes. This series of work, because the work itself doesn't really present you direct a meaning, mm -hmm the whole aesthetics and the design, the way that I'm painting this, uh, it will give at the end the image, the painting of something that have burned. Mm -hmm. So that's why the Black Series comes. Yes. This time. But of course, there, there is another idea behind this. The fires comes first. So this Black Series is something very new. We will run an exhibition in Mykonos this summer to present a few of those works. And it's not about to be released in 2023 because I will, uh, we will have to make an exhibition about the 
uh, Eye Zone, which is the new series of the Indigo. Mm -hmm. But this one, it will be a very, 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 very big scale. So it will be like a big installation. It's not about to be like a small work. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, you know, again, truly inspiring because it's beautiful to to understand and reason with you the way, you know, your 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 technique uh, process is going and uh, i i really thank you because it's it's beautiful you know it's beautiful to see as you said you you know your you you speak poetry in different ways but mm. through your paintings and it's uh, again it's a uh, it's uh, truly inspiring to to you know to, for others also to to see that everybody's going through the same yes. moments in different times in life Yes, as I said before, it's very important to be very understandable. The thing that we artists, we have to present even if, mm -hmm. if something is sad, yes. to present it in a beautiful way. Because we are called here to present and make something beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yes. Even if it's very destroyed or very damaged, we need to give it to the people, the beauty of it. Because yes. everywhere is a beauty. I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you, which is a beautiful, positive, <laughs> positive message for all of us. And again, George, I, I really thank you because I'm, I'm so excited that, to see you very soon, uh, which, you know, if you want to share it, I, I, yes, you, you will be visiting, you know, Switzerland very soon. So we are not going to say more. We're going to keep more people on the suspense. But when our, our, our you know, VR uh, first issue of the magazine will be released, you're going to be with us. That is fantastic. Thank so you so we have much. And I'm looking forward to be with you in Switzerland. And... Thank my new studio will be there. Yes. Yes, there is a very special reason to, to start working in Switzerland. And Fantastic. very happy being there with you and sharing our lives. We can't wait. As you said, you know, it's nice when we, we meet. It's this, you know, and to share time and space together. This is incredible. So now, you know, we're going to really have you here and show you the beauty of uh, of this wonderful country yes. so again and and again you know we can't wait actually to to escape this beautiful country and to come to you <laughs> and and to have a bit of sun i have to tell you the truth but it's okay we have a beautiful sunset here at the moment so <laughs> <laughs> but uh, george it's a pleasure again to have you with us and i i can tell you a hundred times uh, and a hundred times more and uh, have a wonderful evening because I, I see it's a bit dark we are still with the light here <laughs> you see <laughs> a few hours i of... just realized that <laughs> <laughs> we made you keep we kept you in your atelier a little bit longer today and thank you no for no it's my pleasure always my pleasure and uh, again see you very very soon Thank you very this, much. This yeah. new Brave Art Magazine world. <laughs>